Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mr. Opinion Head here on the Low Def Media Podcast channel. Today, we've got a variety of topics that we're going to get into. But before we do all of that, you know, just a little a little catch up. Um, you know, I, every time I start off one of these podcasts, I always have to preface it by saying that I am a kind of a technology nerd. And because I'm a technology nerd, um, I always have to kind of break down Uh, my setup because I find this very interesting. I peruse YouTube and I look at other people's setups and I kind of, you know, there are some that I pine for and then there are others that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing a little better than that. Uh, But the gist of it is this, that I've watched a lot of podcasts and they talk about equipment how important it is, but then there are other content creators who will say, for example, this microphone here, which is 30 to $35 on Amazon can sound as good as some of those higher end microphones, uh, that you can pay two, three, maybe even $400 for. So I'm, I'm like, if I can make it work and it sounds great, then I want to let you know that this is the Five Fine K669 microphone that is around $30 to $35 on Amazon. And I've got it paired with GarageBand, which is free software that comes with your Apple product. Um, and for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, I'm recording this with a Sony Point and Shoot 1080 because similarly, uh, like the microphones, I did a lot of research and there's a lot of debate, discussion, out there about uh, the importance of 4K or 1080. And the general consensus is if you're doing things that are image intensive, landscape photography, videography, where the details matter, you probably want to use 4K. But if you're doing a talking headshot like this, um, you want to use 1080 simply because most people are going to view this on an iPad or a cell phone, tablet, Um, which doesn't even have a 4K screen. And uh, 1080 files are just easier to deal with, especially if you have a more entry-level laptop or desktop uh, that really isn't going to be able to churn through that 4K data uh, as easily. So um, let's get into today's topics. I don't want to bore you too much. Um, So the first one, um, I don't know. I'm kind of late to this train. There's a a TV show that I just started picking up on Peacock, not Peacock, um, Paramount, uh, Paramount uh, streaming service. And so it's it's called The Good Fight. And it's one of those um, TV shows about a law office. Uh, There are a couple main characters that it kind of follows around. But for the most part, it's just about uh, lawyers. Okay. now in one of the episodes, uh, they they talk about. Uh, one of their coworkers, and the potential of that person being deported. And sorry, my dog is under the desk and loves to make all kinds of crazy noises as soon as I start a microphone. Uh, so it starts talking about deportation. Okay. Now, if let, let me kind of frame this for you. This is a person who's been working at this company who for all intents and purposes, thinks he's a U.S. citizen, um, thought he was born in, uh, I think it was Detroit, and comes to the realization that his birth certificate was falsified and that he was actually born in Africa, okay? So now ICE is showing up and they're wanting to deport him. Now, the chances of that happening are pretty slim, but still, it's it's part of the show, and the plot, but it got me thinking, this had to come from somewhere, you know, art imitates life. And so the creator of the show, whoever wrote this particular episode had to get this from somewhere. Something had to have happened where, um, someone was un, un, I would say unjustly, but targeted for deportation. Right. So I look at that and I go, how, how much time, energy, money, resources 
are spent trying to deport this one law-abiding citizen, working, paying taxes, doing what we expect every other citizen to do. But yet, current day, now granted, the good fight is this particular episode is probably in 2018. Not that far ago, but still totally different administration, um, different set of circumstances at the southern border. And so now I look at where we're at modern day, and you've got illegal aliens flooding across the border, and you've got an administration that is literally busing and flying them to other parts of the country. You've got the state of Arizona talking about how the president did not live up to his oath of office when it came to preventing uh, a U.S. territory state. You know, we're talking the language that is part of the Constitution, but um, that did not prevent an invasion. And Arizona is considering the flood of immigrants into their into their state um, as an invasion, and they're illegal. Okay, so the government really isn't doing what needs to be done to halt the illegal flow of illegal aliens into the country. So I look at that and I go, how is that even possible? How do we have an agency that's going to go around, the agency being ICE, going to go around and target individuals who are... I guess a part of the system doing the right thing and cherry pick them for deportation, but then they're not going to go to the border and provide some sort of security process, whatever you want to call it to prevent the illegal flow of immigrants into this country and to at least protect those Southern States, those border States. So I, I looked at that, and I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it, it did just kind of get the wheels turning that we have an agency that does this. And you talk, you hear about it all the time about uh, people being threatened with deportation. It's in movies a lot. But now these, now granted, some of them, some of the people that you see on the shows came into this country the same way as we're seeing illegal aliens uh, come across the border between Mexico and the United States. It happens. But in this particular case, the person was under the premise that they were born here. And so it, it just got me thinking. Anyway, let me know if that makes any sense. And so we'll move on. All right. So you know that we're in the middle of this pandemic, right? And that uh, we have been dealing with mandates, mask mandates. Uh, we've been dealing with uh, vaccine mandates, all kinds of things. And this has been going on for a long time. And the current administration has been the one really pushing that agenda. Uh, in the company I work at, we have over 100 employees, and we were uh, really concerned about the uh, vaccine mandate coming down and saying if you wanted to stay employed, you'd have to get a vaccine. And so I, I am not a proponent of the vaccines. And I would do it if I if my job depended on it, but I'm not going to just go out and say, yes, I believe in it that much. I'm going to get it without being forced, I guess, uh, just because I, I don't trust the, the science that's backing it. And I've seen uh, the science become very politicized. And so I can no longer trust that they're giving us the facts and that uh, they're being 100% truthful. And I don't think we've actually seen enough when it comes to the history of the vaccine to determine, you know, what it's going to do, what are the side effects. So with that in mind, um, the whole vaccine thing, mandates, mask mandates, got to wear a mask if you want to go either out in a public space or inside in a public space, you know, all these different mandates, school kids, the kids, that's the one that really gets me. Stand by. That's one that really gets me is the kids because they're the ones who have to sit in a classroom for eight hours. And you can remember what it was like to be a kid in school. It was hard enough to sit there without a mask on and pay attention and, and try to learn. And to have a goofy mask on the entire time, that 
that just, I, I don't know. I don't know how the kids do it. I don't know how teachers do it. So with that in mind, we've got midterms coming up. We've got elections. And you've already seen where the Democrats' popularity has really been waning because of the current administration and all the tomfoolery and jackassery they've been doing. So the midterms are coming up. And wouldn't you know it, just in time for the midterms, uh, we're starting to see a lot of these mandates become relaxed. They're starting to pull back. Uh, they're taking some of those mask mandates away and, and they're saying, we're going to get back to, you know, a new sense of normal. And it's just in time for midterm elections so they can come out looking like heroes. And I will, I will tell you this, it kind of proves my point that they are using the pandemic as a political tool. And that to me is egregious as a citizen I want my government, no, in a perfect world, I want my government to be truthful, fair, honest. I want them to tell the people what we need to know and not bias it to where it helps them out more than it helps us out. And so it, it really bothered me uh, when I saw that a lot of these mandates were being, I, now I want them relaxed, trust me. I, I don't want to have to wear a mask anywhere. Um, but... I don't want, what I don't want is it to be used as a political tool for, for the liberals to be saying, hey, look what we did, when really it was all the pushback uh, that was from the, the more conservative side, all the pushing back, all the parents at the school board meetings and the, you know, just uh, protests here, there, everywhere, all that pushback is, in my opinion, what led us to where we are now we're starting to see some of these mandates um, become a little more relaxed. So that's good. Good news. I like it. I just don't want Democrats getting credit for it and using it for a political advantage. That's me. And again, Mr. Opinion Head, I've got an opinion. So the last thing, and, and this one, I've been kind of, I don't want to rant, but I've been talking about it for uh, the last two episodes. And it's, it's this cancel culture. I saw an, um, a little snippet where someone was saying, we no longer debate. It's if you, if your opinion differs from mine, then we cancel you because I don't want anyone else knowing a different opinion other than mine. And mine could be a uh, political side. It could be uh, science. It could be any number of things. If your opinion, if, if what you're thinking is different than mine, then, well, I'm bigger than you. I'm just going to cancel you out. And I saw, I think it was John Stewart who uh, came out and said, who gets to decide what is misinformation? Because that's where a lot of this is stemming from. This cancel culture is picking out people who are, I guess, going against uh, the media and their version of the science. And so once that happens, they decide, OK, time to cancel you. And they do what they tried to do to Joe Rogan and get him, you know, kicked off of Spotify. And so we're seeing this more and more often where when someone comes out with an opinion, an idea, that if it doesn't match what mass media sees as normal or uh, the truth, then they just cancel you. They don't talk about it. They don't debate. They don't say, oh, well, that's, you know, that's an interesting way to look at it. Let's talk about that. Let me, let me explain why I think the way I do, you explain why you think the way you do. And hey, who knows, maybe we'll come up with some middle ground and we'll learn a little bit from each other because really that's that's kind of what democracy was built on. Not everyone's going to think the same. And so we need to work together and create things that are better. So we, we can't just have one set of ideas forever. That, that just, that won't work. And we've seen that in history. It just doesn't work. And so this cancel culture is really bothering me because if, I mean, right now it, it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry where the, the main focus is on the pandemic and vaccines and mandates and those kind of things. So that's, that's a pretty big, pretty big thing. But what happens once this becomes a little bit more 
um, what is the, there's a, there's a word when we're taking something that's really big right now, but once we scale that down and what if the mainstream says, Hey, like individual podcasters, we no longer recognize your ability to go out and say what you think. All that should come through us, the mass media, and they do away with podcasts. They do away with YouTube. Uh, they do away with our ability to express ourselves the way we want to be expressed. So what happens then at a micro level? What happens? It's, it's at a macro level right now, but what happens if it goes down to that micro level? And they start really drilling down and taking away, nitpicking little things that we see as freedoms. And pretty soon we don't have those freedoms anymore. But they came really close with the vaccine card, the passport, and saying you can't do, you can't go without it. And I think we've kind of gotten away from that. But what if they start chipping away at some of these other freedoms? Joe Rogan's the big target. But what if, like me, I have my own little podcast. I've had probably 250 listens and uh, I've probably got three to five followers, subscribers. And so I'm tiny, tiny. But what if they came out and said, hey, we don't we don't want anybody talking about blank. And they start infringing on what we see as our rights to air our opinions, to speak uh, freedom of speech. Uh, they're trying to do that when it comes to gun laws. They're trying to chip away at that. I heard Biden say the other day, he doesn't care if it's an assault rifle or a nine millimeter. Nobody needs to have that. Really? So that's my concern. So I always appeal to you at the end of the show. I want to hear from you. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you think of this show. I want you to tell me what you think of these topics. Weigh in. Let's talk about it. Instead of me just blathering on and blasting you with my opinion, let me know yours. Let me know you at least watch the show and what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What can I be doing better? A uh, little constructive criticism is always welcome. Uh, so, hey, I think I have pontificated long enough. And it is Saturday. Time to get out and enjoy some of this nice sunny weather. Uh, so with that, this is Mr. Opinion Head here on the Low Def Media Podcast channel saying thank you. Appreciate you taking the time. And we look forward to seeing you and you hearing me in the next one.